In this experiment, we will be calculating a property of matter called the specific heat. To do so, we'll be using a conservation law of physics, in particular, the conservation of energy. We'll be using thermal energy in our experiment. Specific heat is another defining property of matter like density. It refers to the amount of heat energy, Q, required to raise the temperature of a mass of a given substance, M, by a certain amount, delta T. It is mathematically defined as C equals Q over quantity M times delta T. As I mentioned earlier, all materials have a unique value for their specific heat. In other words, some materials tend to experience temperature fluctuations more readily than others. For example, water has a very high specific heat, and this is good. Why? Because most of Earth's surface is covered with water. And the fact that its specific heat is very high ensures that the temperature of Earth is fairly stable. Today, we'll be calculating the specific heat of copper. To do so, we'll create a system, isolate this system from the environment, induce an energy exchange event within our system, and observe where energy flows. To begin with, we'll fill this boiler three quarters of the way full with water and put a flame under it to heat it up. Our system will consist of this copper bar, an aluminum cup, and water. We'll isolate our system from the environment by means of this calorimeter. Don't forget to put the top on. First, we'll heat the copper bar up to 90 degrees using the boiler. And you can put the thermometer in the hole in the copper. Keep a good eye on it and make sure when the temperature is 90 degrees, you remove the copper bar with this hanger. The temperature of the water and aluminum should be room temperature, but you might want to take the temperature of, of it just to be sure. After the copper bar is introduced to our system, we will carefully monitor the temperature. We are looking for the temperature to achieve thermal equilibrium. How will we know this? This will be when the thermometer stops moving. We will note that temperature. It is very important for our experiment. It will be the final temperature. How does our experiment work? The experiment works with the conservation of thermal energy. It states that the energy lost by the copper is equal to the energy gained by the aluminum plus the energy gained by the water. According to the law of conservation of energy, Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It only changes form. The problem here lies in the fact that we have no way to directly measure thermal energy. However, let's return to our expression for specific heat, C, and do some algebra to write an expression for the heat energy, Q. We have C equals Q divided by quantity M times delta T. Multiplying both sides by M delta T gives Q equals C times M times delta T. The values for C, M, and delta T are all either known or are measurable quantities. And when multiplied, they equal Q. Now, we will return to our conservation of energy equation and substitute our expression for each Q. Doing so, we have C, M, delta T of copper equals C, M, delta T of water plus C, M, delta T of aluminum. Dividing both sides of the equation by M delta T of copper gives C of copper equals C M delta T of water plus C M delta T of aluminum. That quantity divided by M delta T of copper. And now we've solved for the specific heat of copper. Enjoy!